Hope is real because the veil was torn between God and man. Because what happened that day 2,000 years ago is still true. That crown of thorns is dry and crumbled. Those nails are rusted and gone. That old rugged cross has long turned to dust. The tomb has long been empty. And Jesus is still alive. It's one of the toughest things to do. It's tough to wait for something, whatever it is. If you were ever a kid, and most of you were, some of you still are, uh, you remember birthdays or Christmas. It's a week away. It's three days away. Is it today? No, it's tomorrow. That, that, that waiting is challenging. It's difficult. I've got a buddy of mine who's waiting for a car. Right now, it's hard to find cars, used cars, new cars, but he's got a car coming, and he, he actually gives me updates on the car he's waiting for, because he, he's waiting, and he wants me to share that excitement with him, but there's that anticipation. I remember over 40 years ago, meeting Sherry Lynn Vleem, and she fell hard for me, <laughs> and uh, begged me to marry her, and I said yes. Now we, we, but, but when we met and fell in love, it was a week, a month, a year, two years, until this day. It's a long time ago, baby. <laughs> and, uh, but, but there's something about waiting. If you ask any kids, is it easy to wait? How do you handle waiting? They'll tell you. As a matter of fact, we asked some kids here at Shoreline, and here's what they said. Um, something I'm really excited about right now is the camps that I get to go to during the summer. Probably summer when school lets out because we do a lot of fun things. Um, like seeing my cousins swim, at, like going to my grandma's house. Probably the summer because I'm going to Texas. For breaks, whenever I get to see my family. Every year, my family has a summer vacation in Los Angeles, and we get to visit my grandmother. Next year's Christmas, I'm going to Hawaii with my family. A bit annoying because, like, when you're three quarters of the way, you still have like 80 days left to school. You know what's gonna happen. You know how fun it's gonna be, and so that makes it harder to wait. It's like a lot of pressure and you just want to do it and I found out like two weeks ago and I'm like super excited. Like every single morning when you wake up, it's like feeling putting an X on the calendar to mark down the days. So you just want to do it right now. It's stressful. It's sometimes hard to focus while I'm doing school or other things because I'm always thinking about it and counting how many more days left. Waiting is tough, whether you're a kid or whether you're an adult. And 2,000 years ago, when Jesus died on the cross, took our sins, paid the price for us, breathed his last breath, and they put him in the tomb, people were waiting, anticipating. Because Jesus had talked about coming back again. They didn't fully understand who he was as the Messiah, being willing to suffer and to, to lay his life down, but, but there was this anticipation and a day went by, and two days went by, and three days went by. And, and then in Matthew chapter 28, we pick up the story three days after Jesus died on the cross and been put in the tomb. In Matthew 28, 1, we read these words. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb, waiting. What's going to happen? There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. And here's the message. He has risen from the dead and he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. 
And they ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, they clasped his feet, and they worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Easter, when we gather at this time each year, we remember Easter then, Easter more than 2,000 years ago, when Jesus, the one who had come, God among us, took on a physical body and then lived a life with no sin, died on a cross and rose again. We remember Easter Sunday back then more than 2,000 years ago. But, but what does that mean? What does Easter then? And usually on Easter, what we focus on is what happened in the first Easter, and that's a good place to focus. That's where we're going to begin, but we're going to go beyond that. But Easter then, when we look back to Easter then, 2,000 years ago, what are we learning? First, the Lord who died was alive again bodily. That Jesus came in a physical body, God with us, among us. He came as God with us, as God to pay the price for us, but he came in a physical body. He came as a person so he could die for us in our place. So he died physically, bodily, but he rose again in a physical body. As a matter of fact, he shared a meal with the disciples. The next six weeks, we're going to actually gather together here at Shoreline, and we're going to study all those passages from when Jesus rose again from the dead and before he went back to heaven. For 40 days, he was on the earth. We're going to reach each of those stories and saw how he walked alongside of people, the resurrected Jesus walking with people. It's powerful. But we discovered the Lord who died was alive again bodily. When we look at Easter, then when we look back 2,000 years at the first Easter, we learn that the grave, hell, and Satan lost, and Jesus won. Someone say amen. amen. That in this epic spiritual battle, Jesus wins. And Satan loses, and hell loses, and the grave loses, and death loses. And God wins through the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus won a victory over the things that create the greatest fear for us. He won the victory that first Easter Sunday. And we look back to Easter then. We learn that the way to God was opened up and you and I were invited in. Jesus, who's the door to heaven, who's the gateway to heaven, he made a way for us. When Jesus hung on the cross and died, he paid for our sins. When they put him in the tomb, he was there for three days. When he rose again, and that, that, that first Easter, that first resurrection Sunday, he not only won the power of death and hell, but he opened the way and said, hey, by the way, you're all welcome to be with me. I invite you to be with me forever and ever. The thing about Jesus' invitation is it's for everybody. But you know the thing about an invitation is? You ever got an invitation in the mail and you said, ah, not really? If you don't accept an invitation, you don't go. If you don't accept a gift, you don't receive it. But it's, Jesus offers himself to everybody. And so in the first Easter, we see that the way to God is opened up and we're invited in. In Matthew chapter 27, in verse 50, we read these words, that Jesus gave up his spirit. While Jesus is hanging on the cross, he spoke different things, but he came to the end of his life. And it's, when it says in verse 15, he gave up his spirit, what comes next is important. What happened when Jesus gave up his spirit, when Jesus died and had finished paying the price for our sins? This is what we find in verse 51. Right after it says Jesus gave up his spirit after he died. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, if you don't know how that works in the ancient world, in the Jewish temple, there was this place called the most holy place where they believed that God dwelt. And then there was the holy place, all these different parts of the temple. But this curtain was there, and only the high priest went once a year in to bring an offering for the people for their sins. And when Jesus is dying on the cross, that curtain by the divine hands of God is ripped open as if to say, come on in. Come to the presence of God. Jesus. So when Jesus died, that, that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And then it says, the earth shook, the rocks split, the tombs broke open, the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of their tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. There's this cataclysmic, cosmic shaking of everything when Jesus dies. Because the death and the resurrection of Jesus are the divine invitation. The curtain's torn. The place to God is open. God has made a way. All of that happens at the first Easter. 
So when we look at Easter then, we look back at Easter then, 2,000 years ago, we should linger there. We should be in awe that Jesus rose and what it means. But I want to suggest to you that there's more to the story. There's more to it than just Easter then. And as I was thinking about that, I thought about when I was a kid, these infomercials that would come on TV, and they'd be talking about a different product. They'd say, well, no, 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 we're going to offer this product to you, but don't, order, don't answer yet. Don't buy it for $19.95 or two simple flex payments of, of $12.99. But don't answer yet. There's also this. There's also this. So I actually did a little search, did a little YouTube search, watched some of those old commercials or these things. And so I found some of my favorites from back in the day. And uh, The Vegomatic. It slices, it dices, it even makes Julian fries. It's amazing. And uh, I, I remember the flex tape. They showed that they cut a, a little boat in half and put it back together with tape and the guy's out in the water floating around. But, but, but like with the flex tape, they'll say, well, here's the deal. Isn't this a great deal? Isn't this amazing? But don't answer yet. There's more. If you order now, you'll get two. Of the, and they, they, there's more. There's more. There's more. And when it comes to Easter, I want to suggest that you don't answer yet. That you hang on a second because there's more. That yes, Jesus rose more than 2,000 years ago. He broke the power of sin and death and hell. He opened the way to heaven. All that's true. But wait, there's more. There's Easter to come. There's another Easter. There's another resurrection. There's Easter that lies ahead of us because Jesus who rose promised that he would raise us up if we put our faith in him. And so there's not only Easter when Jesus rose, but there's an Easter to come when we see him face to face. When Jesus comes again or when we see him face to face, there's another resurrection. And we find that resurrection in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And the Apostle Paul is writing and he says, let me tell you about another Easter that's still yet to come when you see Jesus face to face, when this life ends. And he writes these words inspired by the Holy Spirit. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up, in victory. Where, oh, death is your victory? Where, oh, death is your sting? The sting of sin is death, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Someone give me an amen. Amen. He gives us victory through Jesus Christ. And and, and so there, there is Easter then. We look back and we remember that Jesus rose from the dead. He died physically, bodily. He was in the grave three days. He was dead. Life enters his his lungs again. And he was raised again. And he conquered sin and death and hell. And he opened the way to heaven. Praise God for Easter then. But there is also Easter to come. There will be a day when we see him face to face. And so when we think about Easter to come, we learn this. That death is not the end, but the beginning. Do you understand that? If you put your faith in Jesus and he enters your life and washes you clean of your sins, when this life ends, it's not the end. We live with fear of death. And in a sense, that's right because God's plan from the beginning wasn't death, it was life. But he offers life eternally. And when you put your faith in him, you can anticipate that and look forward to that. And that brings joy whatever you face. The Easter to come is a promise of radical transformation. What is perishable, what will perish and go away one day, becomes imperishable. That's you and me. At that resurrection, our perishable bodies become imperishable. What is mortal, what, is, what we are now, becomes immortal, what we will be someday. Do you understand that in the resurrection to come, when we experience Easter then, when we see Jesus face to face, everything will change. And heaven will be our home forever. In the Easter to come, we learn that death and sin and sorrow are gone. The things that we fear, the brokenness of this world, the loneliness and the hurt and the struggles that every human being faces. You cannot walk through this life and through this world and not step on some of the landmines 
of emotional brokenness and pain and relational brokenness and physical struggles. And so we limp through this life bearing some of the pain of those things, every one of us. But there will come a day, Easter then, when every tear will be wiped away and every hurt will be healed and every broken thing will be made right. That's Easter then, the resurrection to come that every person will experience if they place their faith in Jesus Christ and accept his gift. And the Easter to come speaks of a victory for eternity, that we will walk in victory because Jesus says, I offer my victory to you. Jesus offers us his life. He offers us his victory. He offers us his forgiveness. He offers us his righteousness. He offers it all to us. You know who he offers it to? Everybody. And everyone receives it. If they say, thank you very much, I'll receive it. But you know what it's like. If someone offers you something, you say, no thanks, not interested. You don't get it. The offer is for everyone. And everyone who receives that gift will be changed forever and ever. And so you say, okay, so Easter. Easter, There's Easter then, 2,000 years ago. Jesus rose again from the grave. Praise you, God. We celebrate celebrate Easter over 2,000 years ago. There's Easter to come. There's a resurrection that will come when we see him face to face, when we meet him someday. And if we put our faith in him, we will be raised with him and we will be changed forever. Praise the Lord. But wait, that's not all. There's more. Don't order yet. Don't stop yet. There's more. And again, I I got caught up in watching, and some of you younger people, I don't know any of that stuff. Go on YouTube, pull up infomercials. It's a crack up. But, but, you know, I remember remember the pocket fisherman, Ron Popeil's, Ronco. Ron Popeil's, anybody remember this? Am I the only one? Okay, it goes back for some of you. Some of you kids are going to have to look it up later. But but it's like, okay, when you order, you get this little fishing pole, and it's all, but but you also get, if you order now, you, but wait, there's more. You get this extra tackle, but wait, there's more. You get these, and there's all, more, more. Well, so you got, okay, so, There's Easter then. Jesus rose. Praise the Lord. He's alive. He's risen. He's risen indeed. There's Easter to come. We put faith in him and we could be with him forever. But here's what else there is. There's Easter now. There's Easter now. Because Jesus who rose from the dead is here with us now. And when you put your faith in him, you stand in life and you look back and say, Easter then, Christ rose. He paid the price. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is preparing a place for us in heaven and he offers us resurrection through faith in him. I can say Easter then, praise the Lord, Easter someday. But when you understand that Christ is risen and he's with you now, then Jesus, when you put your faith in Jesus, he moves into you. There is Easter. Easter is every day of your life if you put your faith in Jesus. It is. Now, I will say we celebrate Easter like this in the service once a year, but for a Christian, Easter is every day. Now, I own two purple shirts, this one and another one that looks a lot like it. And I wear each one of them every two years. I switch them off every Easter. I'm not a purple guy, but I got this for 90% off. It's really a nice shirt. And, uh, and so I, I wear this every other... So, so I'll wear I'll Easter. Remember, you know, it's one day a year. But when you understand that Easter is now, if you put your faith in Jesus that the resurrection presence of Jesus enters you, the resurrection of power of Jesus fills you, and the resurrection pathway of Jesus guides you through every day of this life. So what does it mean to experience Easter now? It means we can live each moment in confidence. You can walk through life confidently. You may not have noticed, but I have. You might not, but I, I've noticed that the world's gotten a little uptight. Maybe picked up on that. There's issues in our world, conflicts, Wars, family members who aren't speaking to each other, and friendships being broken over a disagreement out of one out of a hundred things. People are canceling people, not talking to people. I can't get along with you because you think this. And just the, there is so much tension, so much conflict, and you can feel beat down and discouraged. But when you walk in the presence of the resurrected Jesus Christ, when Easter is now and now, and every day you're walking with the resurrected Jesus Christ, When you look back and say, he is risen, he is risen indeed. Jesus conquered the power of sin, death, and hell, Easter then. And I stand here and say, and I know there's a day when I'll be raised and be with him. That I can live today confidently between Easter then and Easter someday and live in it today. You can walk through your days with confidence, not because everything always goes smoothly, 
Not because everyone always gets along and agrees with you, because they won't. But because you know who you are. You know that Jesus dwells in you because you put your faith in him. And you walk confidently in Jesus, even in a crazy world. When Easter is now, we can forgive, love, and be restored to the people around us. If you want power to forgive people, and there's people in your life that you need to forgive that have wronged and hurt you, every one of us experienced that. But we are living more and more in a graceless, unforgiving world. And someone wrongs us, and we're like, that's it for you forever. And yet Jesus, on the cross, took all of our sins and all of our wrongs and offered us forgiveness, not because we deserved it, but because he loved us. And he said, just as God in Christ forgave you, so you forgive others. That's the teaching of scripture. How do you forgive people who've wronged you? You walk in the power of the resurrection now. You remember the price he paid. And for some of you, even right now in your mind, you're going, mm-mm, I'm not forgiving that person. You're kind of building your case why you're an exception to the rule. Forgiving someone doesn't mean you let them hurt you again. It's not what it means. But it means you don't let bitterness and poison affect your soul for the rest of your life. You let it go. Because God forgives, we forgive too. When Easter is now, when we know it's now, joy can flood our soul and our life, even when things are not perfect. If you walk in the presence of the resurrected Jesus and Easter for you is now, it's today and it's every day, you can have joy even when things aren't perfect. And I know for some of you, the way you're wired, you're trying to organize life and put things together and get everybody to get along and make things smooth and feel good physically and make everything all, and then when everything's all smooth and tucked in and tidy and has a little bow on it, then I'll have joy. Can I give you a little pastoral word? Good luck with that. If you're waiting to have joy till you organize life and get it all together, no matter how good of an organizer you are, if you're waiting to have joy until everything's tidy and nice, you won't find joy because life is messy and life is challenging. I love the story in Acts chapter 16 of the apostle Paul, this preacher in the ancient world who was preaching Jesus. And he went into one city called the city of Philippi. And in Philippi, he preached about Jesus. The response is that he got publicly beaten and locked in jail. He preached about Jesus, they beat him up, they locked him in jail. And late that night, him and his traveling companions, his ministry team, are locked in jail, their bodies still aching from this beating, locked in jail for doing the right things. You know what they're doing? They're singing songs of praise to God. They're not joyful because they got beat up. That'd be just stupid. They're not joyful because they're locked up. They're joyful because they're not alone. Jesus is with them even in the prison. When you walk in the power of the resurrection, your joy isn't based on life being just right. Your joy is based on the one who is with you, who loves you, and who never leaves you. And in the power of the resurrection, we can live that kind of life. When Easter is now, we are never alone because the risen Jesus is with us every moment. When you, when you understand that Jesus rose, there's Easter then, praise God for that. When you understand that we will rise again with him and the mortal will become immortal and what is perishable will become imperishable and we will be changed, you rejoice in that. But when you walk in the power of Easter now, you understand that you're never alone. Some of, some of our congregation right now is online. We have over 2,000 people on an average Sunday who are part of our church through online. And some of you are by yourselves. You may be by yourself, but you're not alone. Because the risen Jesus is with you. And so many of you know that. You experience his presence. You know his arms are wrapped around you. But you're never alone. We walk, when we walk in the power of the resurrection, then the presence of Je- Jesus actually moves into us and, leaves, and never leaves us and never forsakes us. And so to understand that Easter is now, is about believing, receiving, and following the risen Jesus. And we understand that, that, that Easter is then. We look back and we remember, we rejoice. Thank you, Jesus, for rising from the dead. It really happened. You're alive. The whole cosmos was changed because of that. When we look ahead and say, well, Jesus is, is all, uh, the, the, the resurrection, the Easter is also to come. There's more to come. Say, so we rejoice. There's a hope. There's a confidence. But that's not all. There's more. Easter is now. 
And if you want to walk in the presence of Jesus, if you understand that he has said, I offer open arms and forgiveness and love to anyone if you'll receive it. I want to pray. And I want to pray for every person listening right now, either that you've received that gift and you're rejoicing in it, or you've not received that gift and you can today. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, for each person listening online and listening on campus, Jesus, there, um, there is a lot of people who are part of Shoreline that have come to the cross. We've received your grace. We walk and live in the power of your resurrection. We live with the confidence of your resurrection and the hope of our resurrection. But each day, Jesus, help us live in the power of your resurrection, feeling your presence, knowing you're with us, knowing that you will never leave us and never forsake us. Jesus, thank you for your resurrection, that you have changed our lives through faith in you. Let the light of Jesus shine through us every moment of every day. And if you're listening right now and you're online or you're on campus and you just have to honestly say, I don't know for sure that I've received Jesus. Or maybe you say, I know for sure I haven't. If that's you, you're not sure or you have not received Jesus. This Easter, what better day than Easter Sunday to open your heart and your arms to Jesus? If that's you today, I want to invite you to pray this prayer and God will change your life now and forever. In your own heart, with bold words, speak these to Jesus in your heart. Dear Jesus, I don't have it all figured out. I don't have all the answers yet. But I put my faith in you. I believe that Jesus, you came, God, with us into this world. I believe, Jesus, you lived a life that was perfect. I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross to pay for all of my wrongs and my sins. And I believe, Jesus, that you rose again from the dead three days later. So I give you all my wrongs and all my sins. I admit them and I give them to you, Jesus. And in the place of giving those to you, I receive your forgiveness. I receive your grace. I, for, I receive you washing all my wrongs away. And now, Jesus, I take your hand. And I want to walk with you. I want to follow you. All the days of my life and forever and ever. May the hope of the resurrection, Easter someday, become my hope today because I've placed my faith in you, Jesus. And if you prayed that prayer today, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to ask you, if you're online, just do one simple thing. Text the word FAITH, F-A-I-T-H. You'll see it on the screen, whatever monitor you're looking at, to the number you see on the screen. And we want to follow up with you and reach out to you and get you a Bible and just help you start this new journey of walking in the power of the resurrection every day. And if you're here on this campus, if you're in the worship center on our campus, when the service is over, would you go right to the connection center just in the lobby and my wife, Sherry, will meet you there, and she wants to give you a Bible and some information about how you can begin to walk in the power of the resurrection and live a life following Jesus. If you are in the family worship venue or outdoors in the courtyard, and you prayed that prayer today, will you go right out to the pergola? There's the gazebo on one side, the pergola on the other, and Heather will be there as a big sign, and Heather would love to give you a Bible and just give you some information about how you can start growing and walking in the power of the resurrection. But if you've made that commitment today, the Bible tells us that all heaven is rejoicing and you will never be the same. Jesus, we thank you for Easter. We thank you for the celebration of what you have done, of your resurrection then, the resurrection to come, and oh, Jesus, help us walk in the power of your resurrection every day of our lives. We pray this in your name and for your glory. And everyone said? Amen. 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 Before I ask you to stand and send you off for the word of blessing, I want to give you a couple invitations. One is we're starting next Sunday a six-week series on the stories from the Bible after Jesus rose, before he went back to heaven, where he met with people. It is amazing and powerful. I have the privilege, of, I get to preach five of those six, and we have another preacher preaching one of those. But we're going to just talk about that part of Jesus' resurrection. How do you walk with a resurrected Jesus? It's going to be life-changing. You can do it online or on campus at 9 and 11, back to our regular times next week. All right? Second, if you are a new believer... Or if you are not yet a Christian, you say, I'm not a Christian. I wasn't ready to pray today to receive Jesus, but I want to know more about following Jesus. We have these, these small groups called Alpha Groups. And they basically, what they are is you share some food together. 
You watch a short video that teaches about some things about the Christian faith, and then you talk openly with your questions. And what about this? What about that? There's no uh, nothing, no uh, questions you can't ask. Just open, no judgment. Just talking and learning together about Jesus. Or if you know somebody who would need that, if you're on campus, just go by the Connection Center and say, "Tell me about those Alpha groups. I want to know more about that." And if you're online, just call us this week and say, "Hey, tell me about how to get in one of those Alpha groups. We'd like to invite you in to just discover more about Jesus." If you need prayer. You can come forward here, anywhere on campus, come in the worship center in the front while the prayer team's here. If you're online and you need prayer, uh, just, uh, just pick up your phone and call the number you see on the screen. We have people waiting to pray with you. Or you can text your prayer, or you can email your prayer needs to the email address you see on the screen. And finally, if you're new at Shoreline, if you're online and you're new, thank you for joining us for Easter. Feel free to join us again next week at 9 or 11. And if you're new, all you have to do is text the word faith to the number you see. And not, not faith, text the word welcome. Uh, and then we will then reach out to you and get to know you and learn more about you. And if you're anywhere on campus uh, and you're new, just take a moment, go by the Connection Center. They want to give you a little gift bag with some information about the church and a couple, of, a couple of gifts for you and thank you and meet you personally. And so we hope you come and visit us again if you're new at Shoreline. Before you head out of here, I want you to stand wherever you are, at, online or on campus, stand with me and let me send you off with an Easter word of blessing. As we close our time together, May you celebrate Easter then, that Jesus is risen, he is risen indeed, he's alive. May you celebrate the hope of Easter to come, that when we see him face to face, all who will put their faith in him will be raised and be with him forever. And may you walk every day of your life in the power and the presence of the resurrected Jesus so you can love and forgive and live in confidence and joy like you never have before. God bless you. He is risen. Happy Easter. Have a great day.